Hi everyone, welcome to Horse Racing on Another Planet in association with Planet Sport with me Liz. And with me Izzy and we've got a jam-packed Scran National Special for you um, this week. We've got some real fun in store. Which means uh, we're going to enjoy looking back on your favourite Grand National memories. And there's also some fantastic racing on the Thursday and Friday, as well as obviously the Saturday um, that we're going to preview. And most importantly, we'll be looking for the Grand National winner later on in the podcast as well. So um, before we get into Grand National fun times, Liz, um, we'll just start off with some of the hot takes from this week. And um, a big one is Aidan Coleman is retired. I'm personally gutted. He's one of my favourite jockeys. And um, obviously he's ridden some fantastic winners over the years. I think probably the most popular are Put the Kettle On um, and Paisley Park. Also Snow Leopardess that not many mentioned. He had a lovely, lovely partnership with Snow Leopardess as well. Um, obviously uh, the details of his injury was that he had that fall um, a good few months ago now. And if you follow Aidan on Instagram, you'll have seen that he's been on a a very deep recovery journey and has posted quite candidly about every stage and every step and at all of it um you could really see that there was a drive to get back racing but um on the tv on sunday he said he basically can't can't ride a horse anymore it's too dangerous so he's had to retire on medical advice um which is a real shame don't you think yeah, it is. And he also documented like the actual injury um, itself. And it, it, it seemed terrific. And even as myself, I've had two bad knee injuries. Um, I completely empathise with him. And it's a difficult road to even get back into competitive sport, let alone to obviously perform at a top or a high, yeah, a high level where your knees are bent for the majority of the time when you're on the back of a horse. Um, but like you said, he's he's ridden some great horses over the years. John Bond, Epiton, um, you mentioned Snow Leopardess, put the kettle on, and your beloved Paisley Park. Um, but yeah, people have been sharing some great racing memories as well of, of his career since um, it was announced. Um, and one that I hadn't seen before, um, it was a race. It was only, I think, a class six over at Wing Canton in 2015. Um, where it was on Emma Lavelle's See the World um, and the horse hung so badly left. Yeah. He practically left the course um, and he was miles behind because of it, but he managed to get the horse back on course and win by about four lengths in the end. Um, but yeah, that, that I, like I say, I, I'd not seen that before, but probably when I think about his career, my probably... My favourite ride of his was on Epiton in the 2020 uh, fighting fifth, uh, where he just pressed go and, and off he went. It was, uh, yeah, it was nicely timed. Um, and I'm not sure that maybe he got the credit as often as he perhaps should have. Mm. Um, and, but I'm sure that he's obviously going to do well in whatever he chooses to do next. I think he'd be a great pundit, obviously. I think but not being able to ride a horse is going to make it difficult to uh, perhaps stay in the game in that sense. But obviously, perhaps punditry is a way forward for Aidan. I always think he speaks well. He always gave good interviews of his rides. And um, I think that he'd be an asset to any kind of media team, certainly. Um, in terms of, obviously, favourite favorite victories, you already know what one I'm going to pick. <laughs> Is it a good with P? It does a good with a P, but it's not the one you're probably thinking. Mine is the Cleve Hurdle. I think it was the 2000 and... Was it the... It was the 2022 Cleve Hurdle where Paisley whipped around at the start and gave him 12 lengths. I just... Is that, that the one is, where he... Yeah, he didn't want... Yeah, he messed, he messed around at the start, didn't yeah. he? He didn't want to go gave at all. Gave a 12 length lead to a really good field. Um, I think Champ was in the field that day. And I always remember the commentary on ITV and Ruby Walsh was like, might as well pull him up. <laughs> I can't believe he won. It was, it, I cried. I was going out that evening. I had to redo my makeup. I was getting so emotional. Um, but he really was a fantastic jockey. Did He really did build some fantastic partnerships with horses. And like you say, Liz, I think, you know, relatively unmentioned, actually, how good some of his partnerships um, have been over the years so 
from a retirement to a not retirement slash semi-retirement, um, Frankie de Tory, uh, we need to really stop talking about the fact that he's retired because he isn't retired, is he? He's absolutely on fire, a six-timer at Santa Anita. Um, on, was that on Sunday? I think it was Saturday, Saturday night. Thought, yeah, Saturday night, I thought. Saturday night. Um, he's better than ever, isn't he? Like, can we stop messing around, Frankie? Just come back and ride horses for us for Royal Ascot. Come on. Like, <laughs> we're not watching. We're, we're miles away. Come back. Do us all a favour. You know we love you. Just come back and ride. We don't even have to speak about the fact that you tried to retire. We know you haven't. Just come back. <laughs> It's fine. It was, yeah, it was at six, yeah, six races, uh, including uh, the Santa Anita Oaks, I think it was, which was agreed to contest. Um, and he won it on nothing like you for Bob Baffert. Um, I'm not going to say too much about that. Um, yeah. But uh, he, yeah, he's obviously still riding at the top, uh, top level ever since his non-retirement. Um, moved over to the States. Um, but yeah, I think I'll always just feel a bit mm, about the situation to be brutally honest. Oh, see, I think he's he's great for punters because when you've got a jockey that's riding at that level, he's so consistent and has been, obviously. I know it was partly to do with the fact that it was his kind of retirement tour that you could argue there were owners and trainers that wanted to give him rides because of that situation but equally he already had a lot of those good partnerships in place already the year of his retirement tour he'd almost never been better um and you want a jockey like that riding for you when you're going into a race of course you do as an owner a trainer or even just a punter it's it's exactly what everybody wants so I'd love him to come back and just ride again. Like, but there we go. He probably won't. Um, never say never, though. And then this week, um, Liz, we've got some very exciting news. Planet Sport Bet are sponsoring the card at Southall on Thursday and Friday. And we've got races named after us. How exciting. Yeah. I know it. No, it genuinely is because this is obviously, it's definitely, have you ever had a race named after you? No, I've no. never had anything named <laughs> after me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's it's first for us for individuals. I definitely haven't. Um, and we're just at the end of the day, we're just two kind of ordinary girls who get to do this alongside our regular full time jobs, um, which yeah. is just it's just pretty cool. That's why I like it. It's awesome. So very cool, Planet Sport Bet. Love it. We can't wait to see who wins. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. It's time for Fan Corner. Um, and now we're into our Grand National content. So um, some of you will have seen that we put out uh, a poll and a post this week to find out your favourite um, Grand National memories. Um, so, Liz, what's your favourite Grand National memory? Well, sometimes I just sit and re-watch re reruns of Nationals. I don't know if anyone yeah. else does. Um, but it's just... I don't know the commentary that you can hear the noise of the of the horses and they're galloping the cr the crowd and it just gives me like each time it just gives me proper feels um and there's obviously a few memories um well fair few memories that i have of the race itself um but if i had to narrow it down um it would be um for when it was the only time that i ever been a grand national winner um and that was red marauder in 2001 uh when i was 16. don't worry i got my uh my dad to put it on for me um <laughs> I, I watched it again today funnily enough um and yeah it seemed just like the other day but well like you do think it's the other day but it's now in fact 23 years ago which is uh outrageous if you ask me um but it's only when you watch old races back um that you kind of forget maybe how far the the sport has come um yeah. and it's just there was only four finishers that that year in 2004 um, and that was only because AP on Blowing Wind and Ruby Walsh on Papillon, who'd obviously won it the year before, um, was, were allowed to remount, which you're obviously not allowed to do anymore. 
Um, so lots of safety measures have been brought in since those times. Um, and whilst this year may not be like those times, um, it's still a race that gives me, yeah, real heart palpitations almost, like it just sends you shaking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think it's it's always the one where you picked the winner, isn't it? Like they're always your favourite kind of memories. Um, my favourite is probably my first ever memory, and I don't even think I had a bet. Um, but I remember just picking out Hedge Hunter. Um, I think it was two, was that 2005, Hedge Hunter? Yeah, and, I think it um, was. Yeah, that was that was one of my favorite memories. And then obviously kind of growing up and realizing the heritage of, you know, it being Trevor Hemmings and all that sort of thing is incredible. But yeah, Hedge Hunter was my very first memory. And I think therefore my favorite in the sense of um, my kind of first big memory of the Grand National. Um, in terms of winners, I've been quite lucky, actually. I don't know about you, Liz. I don't know how many winners you've picked in the Grand National. I did have... One. I see That's what I mean. We're in for order. Two past one. Oh, no, I've been OK, actually. I had Pino de Rey and I had one for Arthur and I did back Corak Rambler last year. So I've not done too badly. Um, my dad does all right as well, actually. I think he had Neptune Collange. Uh, was that 2011? It's pretty good. But yeah, we're not we're not too bad on national winners. It's hard. It's a hard race to win, though. Um, what I did do is I popped up a poll um, on Twitter slash X, whatever we're calling it these days, um, just to see what people felt was their favourite ever or the best ever, shall I say, Grand National winner. And I had Red Rum, Tiger Roll, and I put Aldeniti on there for the feels as well. Um, if you haven't seen the film Champions, go and watch it. Absolutely fantastic. It's a great Grand National Eve uh, tradition to watch Champions and it really does get you in the mood for the race. Um, so out of those three, we also had other on there as well and people could kind of comment if they disagreed. So Red Rum kind of won quite easily um, with 48.1% of the votes. Tiger Roll was second with 38.5 and Alderniti with 5.9. Um, someone made some really interesting comments about um, kind of that actually they felt it was quite a hard comparison, kind of linking into what you mentioned, Liz, about the fact that the race is just not the same race anymore. Um, and we kind of come to a bit of an agreement that really that is what actually makes Red Rum probably the best ever and one that even in modern times is unlikely to ever be surpassed because no horse will ever win, a, win the races that Red Rum won because the race was so much more difficult as well. So you've kind of got to factor that in. Red Rum won when the course was so much more testing. Um, so it really does go to show you just how good of a horse Red Rum actually was. Um, what did you think, Liz, in terms of the, the post? There were some lovely responses on there. There was. There was one. Um, so there was one from Tom Livermore who shared that he was there in the early 80s for Aldeniti, which was 1981, and Corbiere in 1983. Yeah. Um, he shared pictures of his uh, paddock badge and the race card from 1981. Um, and as a lot of you know, just the story of Aldeniti and uh, Bob Champion uh, definitely warms the cockles. But that race card that he shared, like it's just when you look at race cards now it's I just love it. i you know it's yeah royal mail caro boy spartan missile alderniti number four he was carrying 10 stone 13 it's like so nostalgic isn't it to see it it looks incredible so thanks so much for that tom i really loved seeing that i love old racing memorabilia liz do you keep race cards no i don't no i do i don't no Oh, we'll have to. Oh, there's what? There's only one race card that I have, and that was when Frankel won big race in Newbury, and I got it. And I got it signed by Tom by Queeley. Tom Queeley, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, the only one I have. Um, we'll have to do a week where I'll get some of my old race cards out on the on the podcast because they are really cool to look at. 
Um, in terms of the replies, Liz, there was one that uh, agreed with you as well. So we had Joe who said Red Marauder was his best for the best payout. There was quite a few people actually that um, mentioned that they had some pretty big odds winners. Um, someone did mention that they had Mom Moan, so they topped the list because obviously we all know that they probably got 100 to 1. But there was um, people saying that they'd got, uh, I think, an 80 to 1 shot. Um, Quince, so Christopher Quince, had um, Neptune's Collange, Anti-Post, Anti-Post International, hope you got non-runner, no bet, um, at 66 to 1. That's a fantastic well, that's, price. That guy on Mom Moam, he was called, it was James Hall, and he's now got, he had a washing, it allowed him to buy a washing machine, <laughs> and they, they named his washing machine Mom Moam <laughs> in honour. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love it. There was some there was some fantastic replies. Thank you so much for all of those. I really did enjoy um, reading them. And then that's going to bring us on, Liz, talking about our previous Grand National winners to um, our emoji quiz Liz section. So what we've got here, guys, is um, an emoji quiz. So we're sorry for all those accounts. You know who you are that hate emojis. Um, this one is just for you. So <laughs> we've got 10 sets of emojis, Liz, um, that we're going to ask you to take a look at. And you need to be able to tell us which previous Grand National winner it is. And you've got 10 seconds um, for each one. So how are you feeling? You ready for this? Um, I'm normally really shy to emoji quizzes. General knowledge quiz is okay, but not emojis. So we'll give it a go and see how far I get. <laughs> I've been really horrible as well, haven't I? Genuinely, you have not had sight of these until basically right now. So okay. this is, I have been really mean and not let you have them in advance. So um, <laughs> we'll start off. Uh, we'll start off with the first one there. And you've got 10 seconds, Liz. Off you go. A uh, red rum. You've got it. <laughs> well done. You got that one well quick. You had actually got you got that in two seconds flat. <laughs> I, well, that was that's the I wish they would like that because that'll be fine. Right. That was a good one. That was an easy one. So we, we're easing you in. We're easing you in. Um, you ready for the next one? Yeah. Okay, off you go. A uh, tiger roll, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> oh, that one you were a little slower. <laughs> number three, number three. Red Marauder. No, it's not Red Marauder. Red Alligator. Yes, Red, red Alligator. Well done. So Red Alligator. Um, red Alligator, he actually won the race in 1968. So I'm quite impressed you got that one, Liz. Showing well, your age. I don't know if it's only Red something, but why I said Marauder, I don't know, because an alligator isn't it's a Marauder. Red. It's just Red. You were just thinking Red. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Next one. Off you go. Sea, sea post. Sea post. Are you sure there was a winner of the national called Sea Post? <laughs> going back years, I don't know. Uh, where you've had you... your ten seconds, Liz? You've had your ten... <laughs> Disgrace. <laughs> what was it? This one. Uh, this is Seagram, who won in nineteen ninety one. <laughs> this looks like a telegram, doesn't it? Little post in a letterbox. <laughs> right. Okay. Get ready. You've got ten seconds. Next one. Off you go. Let's go. Oh, well done. I did. Yeah. This, I did this the other day, and my dad was like, "Snail fork." <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <dad. laughs> There wasn't a winner of the national called Snail Fork, but well done. Or Cutlery Snail, I think, was one that came out. Cutlery Snail, with that well-known horse. <laughs> a it bit was like sea post. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we got that one in seven seconds. Right, we've re we'll restart. 
You ready for this next one? Yeah. Off you go. Um, Matt, Highland Wedding. Well done. Oh, I was going to say Mountain Room Bride, but um, that wouldn't have made a difference <laughs> Highland Wedding, excellent. So Highland Wedding actually won the race in 1969. You're getting these older ones. What's going on? I don't know. Where's this knowledge coming from? <laughs> Maybe I'm actually not too bad at uh, You've been studying. <laughs> You've been studying, I think. I think there's been some severe studying going on here. The Wikipedia <laughs> list of previous winners has clearly been a recently visited page by you. Right. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Ting. Running. Royal Athlete. Well done. 1995. Not running. Royal Athlete. Okay. One more. Okay. <laughs> Many Clouds. Yeah. Well done. That's quite that's not too bad. Yeah, you got that. That was pretty good. Um <laughs> next one. Go on, second. say what you said earlier. And... <laughs> second tree. <laughs> um, silver, silver birch. Silver birch. Well done, silver birch. And last one. Um, rule, uh, rule the world. Well done. Rule the world. Well done, Liz. Yes! Rule the world won in 2016. So you got pretty much all of those right it was only c gram c post c post you got close you got close so obviously we've had red rum won the weight won the race in 1973 1974 and 1977 tiger roll won the race twice in 2018 and 2019 red alligator in 1968 c gram 1991 Les Gargo was 1975, Highland Wedding in 1969, Royal Athlete 1995, Many Clouds, very popular winner in 2015, Silver Birch was 2007 and Rule the World was 2016. So that's it for our emoji quiz, Liz. We might have to try and do another one of those, Liz, for like, uh, what's another one of the big races? Derby winners or something. I'd, yeah, I'll do it for you next time. See how many we can get. Yeah. I enjoyed making that, though. That was great fun. So um, now we're going to take a look um, at some of the races that we find at the Aintree Festival. It obviously starts on Thursday, um, goes on Friday, Saturday. So it's a three day festival. Um, and Thursday we find four grade ones. Um, and we're going to take a look at the Aintree Bowl. Um, the race was originally designed for horses who had been beaten or unable to complete in the compete in the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Uh, it's open to horses aged five years or over. It's run over a distance of three miles and a furlong. Um, and during its running, there were nine, there are 19 fences to be jumped. Some of the previous winners include uh, Wayward Lad, Desert Orchid, Sylvaniaco Conti, Fucard, Clanders Oboe and Shishkin. Um, Izzy, what are the current odds of the entry bowl? So, yeah, what we've got at current odds, we've got Jerry Colombi, current favourite at 11 to 8, Shishkin at 3 to 1, Corbett's Cross 100 to 30, Brave Man's Game 9 to 1, Ahoy Senor 11 to 1, Gentleman's Game 25 to 1, and Thunder Rock 40 to 1. So, only the seven runners left in the field. Um, I personally really like the look of Shishkin. I think that this could be absolutely perfect for him um interesting as well obviously huix come out after that kind of initially being a target i think the ground and obviously this continuous rain we've had um has had a bit of an impact on kind of a few of the cards um across thursday friday and potentially even saturday because there's a few questionable runners now in the national as well but shishkin for me for this one um i just think conditions should be ideal um, he's obviously had that little break um, because of the form of the Henderson runners over the Cheltenham period. Um, so he's 
now going to be coming back. He's coming back off of his win from Newbury in February, um, where he beat Hitman. And I think, you know, he should have a really good chance here. What about you, Liz? Who do you like for this? Yeah, I tend to agree. I think we were talking about Hewick a few weeks ago and saying that um, he was aiming for the entry bowl. But obviously, I think that rain um, has gone against him. Um, so he's he's not been declared today when they came out. Um, but I'm, yeah, Shishkin, because I'm also really looking forward to just seeing Nicky Henderson's horses hopefully returning back to their best. Um, so you've got the likes of John Bond, um, Shishkin, Sir Gino, um, all those horses that were kind of scratched from Cheltenham um, for the virus or whatever it was um, from Cheltenham. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the, the stable's raring to go. Um, and yeah, Shishkin won this last year, um, not been seen since his win at Newbury uh, in the Demon Chase. Um, he's obviously very talented, despite what his form suggests. I'm still getting over that stumble um, in King George. Um, but And I don't think Jerry Colomb, who's the favourite, he, he could well still be getting over that second in the Gold Cup last month. Um, so I think Shishkin at three to one, I think, um, yeah, that's decent. I think there's some questions around trainer form. I mean, obviously, with Henderson, it's difficult to know. He's only had four runners in the last 14 days. Uh, one of them's actually won. So he's got a 25% strike rate, which is a little misleading if you think about the usual numbers of runners that Henderson is having. Um, but I've got, I would be a little concerned around Jerry Colombi for, for the bowl, personally. Um, Gordon Elliott currently only operating at a Four percent strike rate. He's had twenty. He's had forty-five runners in the past fourteen days, and only two winners. I mean, look, Jerry Colombo is a very good horse on his day, but so is Shishkin. I think he's a fantastic price at the moment. Yeah, definitely I do. a big fancy for me. God, we're, we're, yeah. we're together for once. We're together. We're always opposing, so we're together on this one. Um, then we're going to move on. And we're going to have a little look at the Friday card. As Liz mentioned, some fantastic racing grade ones on Thursday. There's another four grade ones um, on Friday. And we're going to take a little look at the Melling Chase. We seem to like chases, Liz. We're going to all chase this week. Um, this event is actually named after Melling, which is obviously a nearby village that's made famous by the Melling Road, which is a public road that actually crosses the race course. One of the famous, famous phrases for every commentator during the Grand National as they cross the Melling Road. Um, no doubt lots of you will be hearing that on Saturday and I can't wait. Um, so the race often includes horses that run in the Queen Mother Champion Chase or the Ryanair and it's open to horses that are five years or older and it's run over a distance of two miles and and four furlongs. Um, during its run in, there are 16 fences to be jumped, so it's not an easy race by any means. Some of the previous winners include Viking Flagship, Moscow Flyer, Monet's Garden, Masterminded, Sprinter Sacra, and more recently, Fakir Dudari. Um, so the odds on this, we have some very interesting um, kind of odds going on here, Liz. So with Planet Sport Bet, Currently, you can get John Bon favourite at nine to four. Uh, Pick Dorhi second favourite at three to one. Protector at at three to one. Envoy Len six to one. Bambridge ten to one. Conflated eleven to one. Jungle Boogie at twelve to one. Ash Tree Meadow at sixteen to one. Thunder Rock. Obviously, we mentioned him in the last race. Uh, he is probably unlikely to go in this uh, at 16 to 1. Easy game at 20 to 1. Uh, Elixir de Nuts, Liz, one of your favourites that you had the winner at Newbury, uh, 33 to 1. Manella Drama at 40 to 1. And Fernando Civila at 80 to 1. So obviously we are recording this on Tuesday, which means we don't have the final declarations for this race yet. Uh, but Liz, who do you like here? So... I'm gonna go for a Nicky Henderson double. I think he's gonna. I think. <laughs> um, so I am gonna say John Bon, um, a non-runner in that champion chase um, at the festival, due to obviously reasons that we've discussed before, um, and maybe he was a shock second behind Elix Elixia Denutz uh, in the Clarence House in January. Um, only by a neck, um, but that maybe uh, was when the problems uh, start started in that yard. Um, so he's one on soft, he's one on heavy, um, 
and I think at his current price, um, I think he's also a bit of a giveaway. So it's a yeah, a, a John Bond kind of um, Shishkin double for me. I I'm inclined to agree. I really, really <laughs> like the look of John Bond. I think the world of John Bond. I think he's a fantastic horse, um, and I like you've already mentioned, Liz. Would love to see a resurgence of Henderson runners and winners at this Aintree Festival just because of how disappointing it was for him over Cheltenham. I'd love to see them come back uh, to their best. There's one in here that you probably already know that I'm going to mention. I absolutely love Banbridge. I'm hesitant this time to put him up without knowing the ground because with the amount of rain that's forecast it's very likely he won't run here if there is that much rain. Um, after me being quite bullish and saying that I didn't think it mattered how much rain there would be at Cheltenham, it did seem to be his undoing that it had got a little softer than they perhaps would have liked. Um, so I'm, I'm hesitant to put him up, but I will be keeping an eye on the weather. If the ground looks a bit better and this kind of wind sort of lifts some of the moisture out of the ground, I do still think Bambridge has got a fantastic chance. I think you can put a line through that run at Cheltenham. It had just got a little too soft for him. But, um, yeah, on on form, obviously, John Bond. Pick Dorhey's a very good horse as well on his day. I just don't think he can be ignored. Obviously, he's not. He's second favourite. Um, and interesting that there is also Protector out in there. Obviously, he was a very good winner um, of the Ryanair at Cheltenham. So, very interesting to see him in here kind of going again to see whether he can beat them. But obviously he didn't have um, some of these in the race on that occasion, especially John Bond. So I'm I'm with you. I think a Nicky Henderson double would be fantastic. I wonder if we can get any price and boosts on that. That would be awesome. Um, I'm sure it will be a very popular double over the two, over the two days, certainly. Um, right. On to you know the is? big one. It's time uh, for the big one. And when we say the big one, we say it every week, but this week <laughs> more so. Um, go on, Liz, take it away. The Grand yeah. National. It is the Grand National, if uh, nobody realised. Um, so it's, it is it is a race that kind of stops the nation um, in the UK, especially. Um, it's a handicapped steeplechase over a distance of four miles, two and a half furlongs with horses jumping a total of 30 fences um, and they go around twice. Um, it's the most valuable jump race in Europe with a prize fund of a million pounds. Um, there's been some changes to the race this year, which we obviously spoke about earlier, um, including that there's a, a reduction of a number of runners from 40 to 34. Um, and it's going to be a standing start um, this year. Um, we mentioned some of the previous runners, obviously, earlier on in the show, um, but the greatest is often considered to be Red Rum, who won the race three times. And maybe the most shocking um, in recent times uh, was Mon Mom at 100 to 1. So, Izzy, have you got the current odds there? I have got the current odds. So, um, the big one, the Grand National. Um, you've got Corat Rambler. I know we spoke about this last week. Well done, Planet Sport Bet. Push the price out a little bit. So <laughs> Corat Rambler is now five to one. Um, I am Maximus seven to one. Meeting of the Waters eight to one. Vanillier nine to one. Mr. Incredible twelve to one. Kitty's Light fourteen to one. Marla Mission fourteen to one. Panda Boy. 14 to 1, Limerick Lace 16 to 1, Manella Indo 20 to 1, Nassalam 20 to 1, Noble Yates 20 to 1, and bigger the rest. Um, wow. What do you, I, I don't even know where to start. Um, as always with the National, I don't know about you, Liz, I tend to like to have a couple running for me. It is a race that, um, it's very unpredictable. So it's often good to have your horses bet each way, um, you know, if the price allows, or you've picked yourself a couple of selections in the race. Um, if I have a little look um, at the shortlist, I'll try and give uh, a winner and a couple that I think would be good for the places. Um, now, personally, for the winner, I really liked the look of Galvin. Um, he's drifted massively. He's now 33, uh, 33 to 1 to win. And that's because the ground, obviously, is a bit of an issue. Um, so I think 
I will probably switch from him being my winner because I think he could be a little bit unlikely to run at the moment. Um, so with the conditions and the rain coming, um, although I really don't like his price as short as five to one, I think Korat Rambler does look good to be, um, you know, a, a twice winner of the Grand National and very could very well go and do it again this year for Lucinda Russell. Um, so I'd probably pick him as my winner. And then each way... Um, I do really like the look of um, Galvin, as I've already mentioned, um, for Gordon Elliott. I think that, you know, obviously them not having their run in the cross country at Cheltenham could play a bit of a factor here. Um, but I do still think he's got a very good chance. Um, and in the rain, in the ground, I also quite like the look of Shambard. Oh, OK. Who were you, who were you thinking I was going to say there? Roy, Roy Marsh. Ah, oh, yes. Well, obviously, we mentioned him in our last show, didn't we? James Reevely already dropped up. Um, so who would be on your kind of short list, Liz, at the moment? Well, I have long since said that Vanillier is the one for me. Um, but as I spoke earlier, my uh, record in this race is absolutely horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, he does continue to be um, my pick for the national. Um, there's, there's been some great social media content um, on him in the past week for those that have seen it, um, where he's been loose schooling um, and generally looking a right dude uh, with his groom, Rebecca Rafter. Um, last year's second, um, where he kept on pretty strongly, so he clearly gets a distance and he can jump the fences. And he's only fallen once in his career. Um, and trainer Gavin Cromwell has said that they've trained him to peak for this race. Uh, so Vanilla for me for um, for a win, but a nine to one, you're going to back him each way. Um, but each way wise, um, I mentioned uh, Roy Marge. Um, and yeah, I think you'd sometimes have to take to look to mud lovers who love nothing more than a plod around if that does remain um, heavy. Um, and I think he's he's quite a big price. I think he 66s uh, when I checked earlier. Um, he finished seventh in the race last year. Um, and James Reevely, as we were saying, is set for the ride. Um, and he's won on him twice before. Uh, the trainer, Patrick Griffin, only has uh, six horses in training. That's all he has. Um, and the stable were talking earlier on in the week um, that they think that he's been overlooked. Um, so with extra places available uh, with Planet Sport Bet, um, I think he's I think he's definitely one for the each way market. Now, obviously, Liz, I don't think that we could go without mentioning uh, the ride of our Planet Sport Bet ambassador, Harry Cobden. He's on Noble Yates. Um, obviously, Noble Yates has previously won the Grand National in 2022. Uh, what do you think of his chances? Yeah, I think I think they're all right. I mean, it's an it's an odd. I mean, it's an odd route to take. He's obviously been hurdling um, the last time out at the festival, um, where I don't think he probably did as well as what people were hoping, perhaps. No. I think. But um, yeah, he was he was in that long distance hurdle, um, and now he's coming into this. Like you said, he won it in twenty twenty two last year. I think he was fifth. Um, so clearly, yeah, he likes he likes it at Aintree. Um, just to even kind of complete the race is a, is a record within itself. So a first and the fifth the last two years, he's going for it again. So it'll be uh, yeah, good to see what's uh, what he does there. I think he's got a fantastic each way chance, like you say, as a horse that compete uh, that completes the course. Um, and you've got Harry as well. What a fantastic ride um, for Harry. He's currently twenty to one. Um, with Planet Sport Bet. So I think really one, certainly one that I think you've got to have in your each way selections. Um, and, you know, like you said, Liz, he's hardly a horse out of form. I know he didn't perform kind of to the level that everyone had been expecting off of the back of that win in the Cleve Hurdle um, at the festival. But I think certainly a horse that hopefully hasn't lost too much of his sparkle and actually could, um, as a horse ever, uh, yeah, Red Rum has regained the Grand National title, hasn't he? He had to. He won it in 74 and then he had a few years where he didn't win and then he come back and won again in 77. So um, maybe Noble Yates is 
following in the footsteps of Rum. Um, incredible. So if you do want to catch the big one, it is at four to four o'clock on Saturday. Um, and we'll just take this opportunity on the podcast to wish you all the best uh, with your bets, but also to wish all the best to all of the horses, uh, jockeys, trainers and owners that are running their horse in the Grand National on Saturday. Right, Liz, are you ready for Aintree? We've, we've spoke about this every single week. Is the outfit sorted? We were talking earlier about fake tan. <laughs> We were. I was talking, yeah, fake, fake tan woes. Um, I mean, <laughs> fake tan woes. I'm looking like a tiger bread at the minute. So I don't know whether you do want to be taking advice from me. <laughs> um, I've got the dress now, um, but I've got no accessories. <laughs> <laughs> what accessories do you need? You need you might need sunglasses. You never know. Yeah, it actually looks pretty decent uh, Thursday, yeah. Friday, Saturday, uh, weather-wise. Um, so, like we were saying, I think that ground may well dry out in time mm -hmm. for Saturday. Yeah. Um, so that'd be yeah interesting to see. Um, but yeah, I I am always like this, and I'll pack five thousand items for. I'm going I'm going up on Friday, and I come yeah. back on Sunday. Um, and I'll pack, I'll pack like as if I'm going away for two weeks. <laughs> Thing is, you've got to have options. And when the weather is a little bit uncertain, you, it's like that sort of like that. I always think the best thing to plan when you've got that kind of uncertain weather is something that would involve like a jacket. So you've always got the jacket um, to kind of keep you warm, if that makes sense. So like all of my flat racing outfits, I tend to plan it so that there's a jacket. So that if the weather does take a turn. Because we're southern, is he also? <laughs> Absolutely. We have we can't cope. We actually can't we're not cope. as hard. We're no, we're, we're, still, we're too we're too soft down here. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you ready for your party? I am. I well, I I feel like I've been talking about it for months. Um but are you yeah, naming no, the cock? Are you naming the cocktail? It, I've named it. It's, okay, uh, it's going to be Sex on the Beaches Brook. So um, I'm going to do a classic Sex on the Beach. I've got my little plaque. Um, so I'm going to put the name on there, um, and I'll certainly be posting lots of pictures and everything so you can see. I've got my little um, my decorations that came. <laughs> so I've got to put them all on there like little sticks. So these are like the little ones that go in the cape toppers and stuff. And my bunting, we we'll put that up. That's cool. Um, but these are going on the table. But I think they're awesome. Look how good they are. So, yeah. And I've ordered some like plates and napkins that are like horse racing themed, so that I don't have to do any washing up. Excellent. Thought about these things. Um, so yeah, still like I mentioned the other day, I've still got the big Costco trip to go to do, but. Because it's like deli bits, you can't go too early because obviously they go off otherwise, they go funny. So, um, yeah, alcohol and deli bits, and then we're pretty much there. I managed to jet wash and clean the whole garden and everything, so the temperatures don't look bad. So, we might be able to get outside and see. Um, although I'm never ever letting my patio get like that. Well, it wasn't actually the patio that was a problem, it was the drive. <laughs> I'm never letting it get like that again. I had, um, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen Friends with Joey when he's playing the, um, what is he playing? What is it called? Like a little um, video game and he gets the claw. <laughs> My hand got stuck in the position of the, like the jet wash and like the whole evening I was just like this. And every time I moved it, it was searing pain. Actually, I was gonna have to go to hospital. I was in that much pain. <laughs> How pathetic. Um, but a few Proseccos and a little bit of pain relief and I felt a lot better. Um, but never again am I letting my... I will be out there in December to make sure that it doesn't get that bad. Like, I've never known anything to take me so long. And the worst part about it was that I'd created this, like, line of sludge that was, like, all the sand and the water and the dirt and the moss. And it had, like drifted over to my neighbor's side so i couldn't even just give up i had to keep going because i thought any minute they're going to come out and think why is there like a line of sludge going across our driveway so yeah i did 
I did get halfway through and contemplate just giving up, but I persevered and there you go. injured myself. Um, but yeah, but that's it for me and my Grand National Party prep. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. Uh, obviously, all the best in the Grand National and over the course of the festival. Um, but we do hope that you find the winner. I'm hoping that my 23-year um, hiatus uh, is over um, and I do get the winner in Vanillier. Um, so, yes, good luck to you. And don't forget to join us next week where we will review all of the action from Aintree and we'll be taking a look um, ahead to the Scottish National at Air. So don't worry, Liz, even if it doesn't go well in the Grand National, you've always got the Scottish one the week after. So don't forget to hashtag HOAP so we can see all your opinions um, for Fan Corner next week. <laughs>